Good morning, Phono friends. Don Wilson here with another exciting episode of As the Record Turns. I'm here to talk a little more about the 12-inch, <clears throat> excuse me, diamond disc sample records that I've been making. Uh, so far, number 12 and number 13 have been reproduced and are available. Uh, however, a few people uh, have sent me comments saying that uh, they had significant lateral sway, enough lateral sway uh, that's on the limit pin, sw swinging back and forth, that the reproducers, such as the dance reproducer and the Edisonic, uh, with the larger limiting pin, would have uh, difficulty playing them. Uh, that seemed to be a function of uh, the mold slumping from top to bottom while being pressure cast. So with sample record number 10 being put into production, I have a revised mold that I'd like to show you. Uh, this one is uh, significantly larger. It weighs in at a whopping 30 pounds using uh, an ungodly two gallons of platinum silicone. Uh, it's a very rigid silicone and then has a rather substantial support shell, all to make sure that uh, the casting does not slump while being pressurized. Uh, this has resulted in a very accurate reproduction, uh, I'll show you in a moment, that I have the original that I'm getting ready to ship back to its owner, and one of the copies here, and um, the copy is within a few thousandths of an inch of an original. Uh, with a 12-inch disc, uh, I think that's a pretty tremendous accomplishment, and I can't wait to show you the mold. So, uh, here quickly, I'll show you with camera. I've got the original, I've got the mold, I've got it one 12 inch copy here, and a dial caliper that I'll show you some results in just a second when I flip the camera around. Now this is a big mold. It's 16 inches across, probably a foot and a half tall. Um, it's an absolute monster you can see that there are these uh, five uh, two-inch uh, posts, I guess we can call them, that lock it into the support shell. Let me open it up so you can see the inside. See, and look how thick that is. This is probably four inches thick. Uh, this post here is two inches, so we probably have two, four, six, or something like that. Uh, there's also several bolts that hold this firmly shut. Those bolts have been removed because you probably know what a bolt looks like by this point. Joke. So here's the inside. I'll show you the other half, too, as soon as I can muscle it around here. Okay. The playing surface, obviously. We have the spindle hole. Uh, the different mold halves are keyed. Uh, this keyway also, uh, so it serves two purposes. It locks the two halves exactly in place and uh, this particular design also acts as a gasket. So when this is all bolted together, you can see the bolt holes. When this is all bolted together and those bolts are nice and tight, this creates a gasket to keep this, uh, the urethane resin from leaking through. Speaking of the urethane resin, also incorporated in all of my later molds is this sprue area, which also acts as kind of a funnel. So the resin can be poured in there and this area is filled up as much as possible uh, to also act as a little bit of a reservoir. So if a tiny little bit seeps out, uh, which is perfectly normal and acceptable, that uh, this reservoir will be there to uh, backfill any seepage that occurs. Now these halves are locked in place. I don't have any intentions of removing uh, the rubber from the support shell. It would be possible, uh, but this is a very firm rubber, and I have these locked in place. The goal is simply that um, 
after the record has fully cured and it's fully hardened that the silicone can be flexed a little bit at the top or any of those uh, support pegs can be pushed sufficiently to uh, flex the rubber a, a little bit to then pop the disc out. So that's the mold. And here we have the original disc. And we have the first copy that I've made. These are both on side R. And if we take a quick look using a dial caliper, I can't really do this with the phone at the same time, so bear with me for a moment. So that is the measurement of the side of side R. Then if we take a look at the copy, the copy is within five thousandths of an inch of the original. That's quite an achievement considering a foot long uh, disc with only five thousandths difference uh, that probably puts it 99.999% the same. Um, but now comes the important part. Uh, let's put them on and do a little test play. So here's the original, and I would like to uh, show you it playing on the outside edge. And we're going to listen to selection number one, Out in the New Moan Hay. Uh, tenor duet, Mr. Arthur Hall and John Ryan. And I'm going to show you the uh, lateral sway on the reproducer of the original compared to the reproduction. Out in the new moon, hey, sung by Arthur Hall and John Ryan, 51801. Young Harry White. He met a farmer's daughter, and they fell in love and died. The farmhouse was so crowded, they couldn't bill and coo. At last they got a great idea, and this is what they do. Every night they sit and coo, out in the new old hay. No. Okay, there we have the original. This aside. Done by Arthur Hall and John Ryan, five one eight zero one. Country Billy, when white young Harry White, he met a farmer's daughter, and they fell in love and fight. The farmhouse was so crowded, they couldn't feel and move. At last they got a great idea, and this is what they do. Every night they sit and go out in the new old hay. 